The best way to collect is that you know the artists as much as you can. You know their work. You know them maybe personally a little bit. And you know that you've never seen really a bad, bad piece that they've right. done. It's all right, right. pretty good. Yeah, and so, it's now, pretty solid. Yeah, <laughs> yes, that's right. Some artists have better days. Every, every artist has some bad days. But basically, it's good. And then it really doesn't matter in a way which piece you pick because it's all part of the artist. It's all you have to get the, the whole oeuvre of the artist to understand how this fits in. The house has a sort of Italian feel to it, country Italian, Tuscan maybe. And this is sort of the equivalent of a, of a fresco in an Italian Renaissance house. It's difficult to separate the tapestry from the room or the loom, which takes precedence over it. For it must always be frontal and yet to one side. And what all that means is that you have to see a work of art in its total context. And this artist really prefers to have this work outdoors because he thinks that the, the, the context of nature is all part of the piece. to be a level of communication between the art in an art collection. Every piece of art is almost perfectly placed and it's, it's taken years and years and years. We've moved the stuff around a lot of different ways, the things that can be moved. Having an art collection is like having a gigantic dinner party and that you invite different kinds of people who are going to have a conversation with each other. I mean, you want some bad boys at the dinner party, but not too many of them. You want somebody that will stir the pot. But you want some people that can respond, respond to them, and it won't be just sort of chaos, you know, that it'll be something that, that, that reaches some kind of goal or has some point of it, and that the people will like each other and leave the dinner party stimulated by what they've seen and heard at the dinner party. Not and that, scandalized. What'd you say? And not scandalized. And not scandalized, no, no. She makes this contrast between these flowers coming out of her veins and this torn flesh of her arm right there. The person here is trying to push out of the picture. You see this hand right there? That's yeah. painted from behind. And if you look, look behind the picture, you'll see the, the did you, did you look, did you see the hand? Yes. And so he's trying to push out. The face is so humanistic. He has this sort of a flip side of this statue of himself. It's called Ecstasy of a Mud Stomper. If I look at her in the, in the face, uh, a little it's a little squirrely. <laughs> <laughs> And that funny, funny kind of grin that she has uh -huh. show, showing her, gu her gums and her... The this, joker. This, the, the joker, this eye is so weird. I've always been very fond of Bay Area art because it really was done totally out of sync with anything going on in New York. It was its own thing. <laughs> Didn't try to sort of follow anything slavishly. Bring the artists down here for the weekend. They see the caliber of the rest of the collection. Most of these artists know each other. And they're saying, you know, we want you to do a piece of art for this house. And you, you choose the place where you want to put it. And you choose what you want to do. And then you have to trust the artists that they're going to do something wonderful. And then maybe it's not exactly what you had in mind. But uh, it would be boring if it were.